my name is Andy Hartwick. Um, uh, I did my optometry degree uh, at University of Waterloo in Canada, and then I did a PhD in neurobiology in, uh, uh, at the Department of uh, Anatomy in uh, Dalhousie University, which is in Halifax, Nova Scotia. Um, right now, I'm currently associate professor at the College of uh, Optometry at Ohio State University. Uh, I teach um, optometry students visual neurophysiology, uh, essentially how, how the retina works, how the signals get transferred from the uh, eye to the brain, so how we see. Uh, one of the current projects we're interested in, um, we're uh, a lot of uh, patients uh, who have traumatic brain injury, they um, tend to have increased light sensitivity or what you could call photophobia. So even in a, a sort of lighting situation like we have indoors, uh, this would be too bright for them. So these are the people that you often see wearing sunglasses indoors. Um, and it doesn't seem to, you know, you can have a variety of different types of brain injuries and yet still have this, this symptom. And so. Uh, I've been very interested in why this sort of sense of, of light brightness changes in these, these patients and what we think is happening is that the signal that goes from the eye to the brain about how bright it is, is altered after the injury. Um, and so uh, we were recruiting patients with traumatic brain injury who had had uh, increased light sensitivity for at least six months. So this is chronic light sensitivity that lasts for many months after the injury. Uh, and we were examining um, how certain cells in the retina uh, function by looking at pupillary light reflexes, so shining in red and blue lights, looking at how they respond. Uh, we were also, uh, also measuring their um, sleep schedules um, and uh, asking them about their, their light sensitivity, how it impacts their quality of life, um, <coughs> and comparing that to a group of uh, control subjects. So they had to be over 18. We were specifically recruiting mild traumatic brain injury. Um, and so for mild traumatic brain injury, that doesn't mean that uh, it has nothing to do with the consequences after the injury. So um, what it is is basically at the time of injury, if you didn't lose consciousness or you only lost consciousness for a half hour or less, it's usually described as mild. If you're in, you lose consciousness, so for instance, if you're in a coma for a few days and that's severe. Uh, so we were specifically recruiting patients with mild traumatic brain injury, or TBI, um, and they could have had a variety of, of different um, causes of the injury. So we had a lot of motor vehicle accident, we had a couple of football players, uh, soccer and lacrosse, um, a couple of assault cases, a, bo a boxer, uh, the list sort of went on, it was a wide range. Well, there's certain cells that are in our retina, especially in, while they're in the inner retina, um, whose job is to tell our brain how bright it is. So these cells play a key role in setting the size of our pupil, for example, and they also play a key role in telling our brain whether it's day or night, so sort of setting our circadian rhythms. Um, and so the simple hypothesis was if these are the cells that tell the brain how bright it is, um, perhaps in these patients with photosensitivity, essentially these cells are telling the brain it's brighter than what it actually is. So um, it's a bit of an oversimplification, but we thought that they, were hyper, they might become hypersensitive to light after the injury. So we were using specific light stimuli to try to assess their function and see if they would show you know, a greater response than, than what you would expect in a uh, in a control subject.